Oh hey, I don't know if I can keep this up. The more I play difficult games, the less time I can spend being more happy. But I got nothing to do with my life besides playing video games, so I decide to be a moron. Not you again. Ninja Gaiden 2. Not that one, this one. The second installment in the Ninja Gaiden trilogy for the NES. Great. The game was first released in Japan on April 6, 1990, in North America on May 1990, and in Europe on October 27, 1994. The game is titled Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos. In Europe, it is called Shadow Warriors 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos, and in Japan, it is called I Give Up. A monthly American video game magazine called Electronic Gaming Monthly previewed Ninja Gaiden 2 in late 1989 and early 1990. Nintendo initially introduced the game as an arcade game for their PlayChoice 10 system at Chicago's American Coin Machine Exposition in March 1990, which was marketed as a sequel to the first Ninja Gaiden arcade game. The game also had ports published for the Amiga and MS-DOS by GameTech in 1991. Well, here we go again, a sequel to a franchise that I have to play for the sake of my existence. Gotta stay close to your identity, people. So here's the plot. After the first game's events, Ashtar, the bad guy who controlled the bad guy from the last game, is informed of that bad guy's defeat. He plans to rule over Earth by opening the Gate of Darkness. Meanwhile, Ryu ran into a bunch of thugs and some sort of monster. An anonymous person met Ryu after the fight and he told Ryu to go to the Tower of Laja to save Irene, the girl we met in the last game. On the way to the tower, Ryu got ambushed by a goon, and the goon told a little bit about Ashtar. Ryu made his way to the top of the tower, found another bad guy, and found Irene, or so he thought. It appeared to be Ashtar in disguise and he shot Ryu using his sword. Johnny Cage appears and Ashtar disappears into the maze of darkness. He revealed that his name is Robert and he's with special intelligence. Robert talks about the Sword of Chaos, or Ashtar's sword, and he tells Ryu to go to the maze to find Ashtar and Irene. We run into Ashtar and he starts talking about evil, taking over the world, something like that. And we somehow ended up at the North Pole. And let me just sh show you this. What an absolute masterpiece of a dialogue. Irene told Ryu that there is an altar somewhere and that he must destroy it, and Jesus, how is this on the NES? This looks sick. After fighting some familiar creatures, Ryu runs into Robert who appears to be injured. Robert tells Ryu that Irene got caught once again. I'm starting to see a pattern here. A bunch of enemies is coming so Robert tries to hold him off as much as he can. He dies and Ryu finds Irene only to find his old enemy still alive. J Jack, Jackie Chan. Jackie explains how the evil sword works and the gate of darkness shall open. Ryu defeats him once again. Jackie comes back and turns into what? He defeats Jackie and he's still alive. So with the power of Ryu's clan, the dragon sword, and save states, he finally defeats Jackie Chan. And then we get a face reveal of Ryu. I wear masks with a smile for hours at a time. Irene is still alive, everything becomes romantic, and they stare into the sunset. The end. Now, the gameplay is still pretty much the same compared to the first game. In the very first level, we are introduced to ninjas with osteoporosis, a bunch of master splinters, and ninjas that throw shurikens and pieces out. You also have these red orbs around the area. Hitting them gives you random power-ups, with the most notable one being the clone power-up. This is a really useful power-up throughout the game, so you can only have up to two clones with you. It's really vital to have a clone throughout the level. The first boss is not all too difficult, he just walks around and then he charges at you. If you're clinging to a wall, let go right before he charges to that side. In the next act, now we have Jason Voorhees running at you and the most annoying enemy in any game. Birds. Right after the train section, we are now on top of a mountain. How did that happen? The air keeps pushing us and it is infuriating. The air changes directions without giving you any second of preparation, and because of that, the air will just push you off a cliff. Like, 
how is that even possible? I know we're on top of a mountain, but that does not explain how a ninja carrying a katana keeps getting pushed by a freaking wind. Another thing I want to point out is that on each side of any platform, you can climb up and down like a ladder. It's just not plain obvious, it looks like it's part of the background or something. I just realized this 10 minutes into the game. Moving on to the boss. This is creepy. The boss sends out a group of spiders. The spiders are the most irritating part of this fight. If you try to go up, the boss goes down. If you try to go down, the boss goes up. But the boss gives you a little amount of time for you to land a hit. On to the next level, I- Oh. My. God. You can't see where the platforms are. This is ridiculous. It's not as annoying as the wind thing at the last level, but here it's easier to fall off without knowing there's a gap there. I want to point out the second worst enemy of the game. These guys. They like to jump around you and roll around. They are so annoying. Right after that area, you enter the tower. We also have this new guy that throws fireballs horizontally. I like to mess with this guy a bit, though he packs a lot. You need to land a ton of hits to defeat him. Afterwards, it's on to the next boss fight. You are fighting some sort of robot and he throws projectiles at you. He flies around so you need to get a hit for the robot to land. I'd say this boss fight is easier than the last one. As long as you're careful. We're in hell now. We have these things that float around and shoot four projectiles. It's hard to see them when the background is fire. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Shortly after this part, we move on to- Oh my god. This is torture. I don't know which is worse now. This, this, or this. But that's not all. The water becomes more annoying in the boss fight. You have this thing in the upper middle and sometimes its hands come out of either side. Whenever you get hit here, it's easy to get pushed by the water and it's hard to get back up. But this boss fight is actually pretty easy. You just need a good amount of health and patience. So you move on to this sort of dungeon area with spikes around. Uh, you have less room to move around these areas and it's easy to lose a ton of health. And come on, what's next? Muddy water? Quicksand? These guys never run out of ideas to give you a migraine. Obviously, the platforms are slippery because it's all ice. There's not much to say here other than the spiders who shoot fire at you, that's it. The next boss is Ashtar. This fight can be pretty annoying and it takes a while to finish. A bunch of fireballs come at Ashtar and release them in the exact same way. After that, he teleports. There's no indication of where Ashtar will appear next. And the fight is tough, but I gotta admit, the stage and the music during this fight rocks. We're inside a cave in the next stage. Um, this stage can be a bit confusing with these destroyed buildings covering the screen. And now everything is red. On to the next boss fight, we gotta defeat two gargoyles. They jump and shoot gums at you, moving on. Next we have the most disorienting background in NES history. Now we're in whatever this place is. Then we gotta fight the bad guy from the last game. Um, not much has changed compared to the first game, but it is still INCREDIBLY annoying. What the hell is this? So we gotta avoid the poison dripping from the ceiling while avoiding harmful meatballs. This fight does feel intense if you're low on health, but the stage is something I want to talk about. There's just too much room to move around, and I know I would still complain about it if the area is a bit smaller, but still. The next phase is similar to that of the final boss in the first game. You gotta hit the head first while avoiding its attacks and there's barely any room here. After enough damage, it's time to strike the heart. Game over. Ninja Gaiden 2 is definitely a step up in terms of cutscenes, enemy variety, and overall gameplay. Now the question is, is this harder than the first game? Yes, but not a whole bunch. This game has a ton of gimmicks that will definitely mess you up. Now the cutscenes look way better. There's much more stuff going in the background and it looks awesome. The new abilities are so helpful in this game. While the new abilities are great, that doesn't mean the game gets any easier. This is a Ninja Gaiden game and this one rocks. So Ninja Gaiden 2 is great, but it's still difficult. And Christmas is right around the corner, so I hope I'm gonna have a great time this month. And this just came in the mail. 
Oh yeah, stay tuned for that.